first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is eight o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Um, we're going to get into the information. Now, when we talk about this Jesus composite character or this biblical Jesus, we're talking about specifically how Jesus' um, name was derived. And it was derived from the Greco-Roman um, as the Greeks um, became or developed a Roman culture. They brought with them their god Zeus. And the new god of the Romans became Jupiter, Jupiter. And Peter becomes the right-hand man to Jesus, but they took the word J-U, Jew, and put Zeus with it, in which that became Jesus or Jesus. All right? Then you have the Christ information, in which that deals with um, also within the Greek, in which that comes from the word Christos. Christos means to be anointed. Anointed. Now, we find this in ancient Kemet with the initiates who become the messen, which becomes the word messenger or mes- within the English transliteration or messiah within the Hebrew or mashiach. All right. Um, the, um, these particular initiates was initiated. If you get the hieroglyphics or the metuneta, you would see Heru on one side and Tahuti on the other side. All right, um, Heru or Horus is on the right side, Tahuti is on the left side, somatic to the right and left eye of the sun and the moon. Now, you will find that the initiate stood in the middle of them. This is the same as within Freemasonry as the, you know, as the biblical characters of um, Boaz and Jasun. All right, but then there's a middle pillar. You symbolize the middle pillar, all right, your spinal column in particular, or the jijig the backbone of Osiris. Now, during this initiation, you will see the crocodile fat of Sebek being poured over top of the head of the initiate, symbolic to that initiate being anointed. All right, now in Christianity, they use olive oil to this day. All right, now, or some other type of oil. Now, this is all um, good and dandy. However, when it comes to if Christ really existed or not, 
We got to examine that. We really have to examine that. You know, because um, Walter Williams in his book, The Historical Origin of Christianity, right on the cover, he breaks it down that there's never been a man who ever walked the face of the earth by the name or any face, you know, any given time by the name of Jesus Christ. All right? And and um, I'm in alignment in order to agree with him. He's absolutely correct. You know, Pastor Ray Higgins, who is good friends with Walter Williams, um, basically have said the same thing openly or what, you know, in his videotape, what shall we do with Jesus? All right? And we say he breaks that down beautifully. Now, I got to break it down in order to make some sense in regard to how much um, do this biblical character of Jesus Christ have to do with us, have to do with have to do with us physically. And this is what we found out, you know, and I'm going to get to it in a minute, but we're going to continue going through breaking this information down. Of course, in Walter Williams' book and many others, um, if you um, read about the Nicene Council of 325 A.D. with Constantine, he brought about 319 bishops in order to decide on this created creature or made creature known as Serapis. Serapis is also another composite character. In which that the word saw comes from the word also, and apis is actually symbolic to the bull. All right? Now, this is um, deep in the sense that this actually was going back 6,000 years ago. All right? Now, we know that leading up to 2,000 years ago, they started making history going reverse down to zero. And then from zero on up to now, 2,000 years later, making us say to ourselves, oh, this symbolized um, Jesus Christ. But yet, they'll tell you that, well, he came or was born somewhere between 4 B.C. and 7 A.D., which they, you know, scholars can't make up their mind which one it is, you know. But um, this composite character, Serapis, is actually a saw which symbolized the sun. And Apis, which symbolizes Taurus. So it's talking about the sun in Taurus, in which that dates back 6,000 years ago. Now, I found this interesting because Elijah Muhammad said that the Albion was created 6,000 years ago. And so obviously they took this composite character in order to symbolize as such. All right? Now, that's, 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 that's something in which that, you know, Go back and analyze and read, and you will see of these particular connections, you know. And that ended 4,000 years ago, that particular age of the sun in Apis or in Taurus, astrologically, all right. On the Zodiac Man, Taurus symbolizes Mother Zuakaius, or um, um, symbolizes the throat area, Okay. The Kundalini, which is symbolic to the sun within you, um, at the throat area. All right, this is the metaphysical connection of what they're talking about, in which that dates back to to the time of Moses, in which that he was symbolic to a sun character, hence the Elohim, in which that um, during the age of the calf or during the age of Apis, the golden calf, you know. So that was talking about that same time period. That symbolism is there within the Old Testament during that time. And that's no coincidence. Once again, go back and check it out and you'll see what we're talking about. Then you have another character by the name of Yahshua Ben Pandera. Pandera symbolizes, um, within the English transliteration, the word panther, in which that um, the leopard skins was worn by the initiates into the ancient mystery school of the school of Herbach or Hakka, which means um, the teachings of light or the teachings of Tahuti. All right, and of course, Tahuti has seven principles. All right, um, as his wife or co partner had seven principles known as Mayat. But we'll get into you know all of that later. But the thing is, is that Yahshua ben Pandera um, was also um, an assumed um, live person. However, even Jeremiah Massey, who wrote about it within historical. Jesus and mythical Christ, he wanted basically to just say that 
he didn't exist either. But because the Talmud has stated as such and has postulated this um, information, you know, he went on ahead and tried to explain it. But, you know, any scholar knows that the Jesus story is based off of Heru or Heru Shu, all right, which Shu is actually another form of Heru, which is the firstborn son um, of Atum, you know. And so he himself, um, and the thing is that Atum was called Isu or Isa, just like Shu was called Isa, in which that Isa is the name in which that we have within the Holy Quran today for the name of Jesus. But how the hell did Shu have that name, you know, dating back over 10,000 years ago? Jerry Massey goes and takes it even further. He says as far back as 52,000 years ago, or two possession of the equinox. You know, so um, this supposed character, Yahshua ben Pandera, is only mentioned within the Talmud. And um, you get a book by G. Mead, um, M-E-A-D. Um, he speaks about um, Yahshua ben Pandera. Um, but, I mean, they really have no particular proof. You know, matter of fact, in the book by G. Mead, he says, um, I think the name of the book is 100 Years Before Jesus, in which he speaks about how this person came um, uh, um, 100 years or so prior to um, the Christian Jesus, as we would say, or, um, you know, before the so-called Christian era. You know, so... Um, of course, we know, I guess, his so-called first historian by the name of Josephus, he stated within his writings that there was, during that time period, about 14 Jesuses. Now, that's interesting that he um, used uh, 14 Jesuses because the number 14 made me think about the 14 pieces of Osiris, uh, also, off the bat. And that was a clue he was leaving because supposedly he was forced in order to put that information um, within his writings um, years later, which um, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, this is what it said. Now, when we get into the image of um, Jesus, in which that was drawn by Leonardo da Vinci, who won out over Michelangelo, um, that image was drawn from Caesar Boyer, in which that Hebrew Israelite speaks about um, very animately um, that that's where that image comes from. This is the image in which that we often use today, you know, in order to say that is Jesus, you know, um, you know, the one with the so-called, um, you know, straw, blonde hair and, you know, blue eyes and so forth and so on. Now, We all heard about the fact of the sun, um, you know, and it's 12. Now, of course, how the sun um, symbolizes Jesus, you know, just like Jesus at the Last Supper, him and his 12 disciples, or matter of fact, King Arthur, you know, and his 12 knights at the round table. All of that is mythological and all of that is based on that same um, astrological alignment or constellations. Now, the thing about that, you can get um, that information from Jordan Maxwell. He breaks that down beautifully, all right? So we're giving you all the place that you can go and actually do your research um, at on these particular things. But ultimately, um, everything goes back to Heru, and his other form is Shu, all right? Now, Shu, um, if you get Jesus' name within the Aramaic, Ahushua, or in Hebrew, Yahshua, uh, which is the English transliteration, uh, we say today is Joshua. Of course, we know the J didn't come into existence. This is another reason how we know until the um, 15th um, century, you know. And it wasn't used um, until the 17th century on a large scale. So there was no J originally. So that's another thing in which that... Um, when it comes to these particular sciences, um, how the name Jesus comes about, you know. So really the name Jesus didn't come about until the 17th century on a large scale. All right? 
And this was after the time of the writing of um, the Bible, you know, after King James got excommunicated by the Pope during that time. And he brought together his council, which was the Shakespearean Council of Francis Bacon, you know, i.e. William Shakespeare, and um, a host of others, um, literal minds during that time period from out of Cambridge and Oxford and different other places in which that came together in order to put the, you know, put this um, Bible. And actually King James at the time was the um, grand master of the United Grand Lodge of England. You know, um, as well as also Francis Bacon, i.e. William Shakespeare, was the founder or the head of the Rosicrucians. So their Bible, that particular Bible, is heavily encoded with um, these sciences and these codes. All right. Matter of fact, everyone knows about the. Um, if you go to Psalms 46 and read 40, um, read 46 words down, you see the word shake, and after shalah, um, and read 46 words up, you see the word spear. Shakespeare. He embedded himself at the time he was 46 years old, as well as also. Um, he was the 46th member of his Shakespearean council at that particular time, in which that they started editing or uh, writing the Bible in 1604, and then by 1609, um, he got it, and by 1611, um, it was supposedly done, you know. And, you know, and that's that's something else in which they begin to talk about because um, according to some historical reports, um, slavery began 1619. You know, with the bringing over of 20 so-called slaves. You know, of course, you know, um, you can see um, maybe there's also keys hidden up in there about that also. You know, but we're talking about the real essence, the real science of what is taking place with this character, you know, and actually how it relates to you. All right. As we were saying, that is the thing that we want to go more into. And so, as we bring down with the name Yahshua, you know, um, Shu, which is the ancient Egyptian or ancient Kemetic or Tamaranian deity, or Netter, symbolizes the personification of air. Now, that's interesting because um, the same way that we break down 666 to mean six protons, six electrons, six um, neutrons, we do the same. Because you'll find out that Yeshua or Jesus Christ, the name itself breaks down to 888 in Geomantria, or what is called um, Hebrew numerology. You get the information, it breaks this information down. It breaks it down perfectly. Now, not only do it break it down, you can get um, Alistair Crawley's copy. All right, he breaks it down in there, how Jesus Christ comes up to the uh, mathematical formula of 888. Now, if 666 is carbon on the periodical chart in the sixth element, then 888 is the eighth element on the periodical chart, which is oxygen. Hence, dealing once again with the personification of air. So incidence that Shu, who is the um, ancient comedic deity, um, or netter and the personification of air, meaning the breath of life, and Jesus Christ is 888, and it's related to the aspect of oxygen, which is air once again. Another clue is the fact that when you sneeze, you say, Yashu. Now, nobody here as babies had sneezing classes. Is it all the same word when we sneeze? Or the same thing? So the Jesus Christ aspect is actually embedded inside of us. All right. Matter of fact, indeed, on Corinthians, it speaks about what Jesus Christ is within us. So obviously, it was talking about um, this science of the breath of life. Of course, we know in the book of Genesis, it says um, God brings to the nostril of man and made man. So if you want to tap into the God aspect of yourself, which is so you must master the science of breath. 
which is all of this is encoded. So this is the real meaning of, is the breath of life. And Yahshua within Aramaic and Hebrew uh, means um, Lord of salvation or our salvation or old salvation. So it's talking about how the breath is what saves you. We know that the breath regulates basically every aspect of your physical body. Without it, you die. You can go without food for a month, water for two weeks. The breath, at the most, on the average, three minutes. Try it and see. I'll call 911 while I'm on here. So the breath is the most important aspect of your living. So this is what is meant by Jesus is your Lord and personal Savior. It's talking about the breath of life. It's not, it don't have anything to do with a mythical character from 2,000 years ago, and no matter how many stories that they have told you about. It doesn't. So, you know, people are talking about the way for the return of the Mahati within our Islam, or the Messiah or Mashiach within Judaism, or the return of Christ uh, within Christianity. All of that is talking about the same thing. Because it's only through the breath and the mastering of the science of breath that you can actually um, open the pineal gland in which that produces our Saurian resurrection, which is um, the golden body of Heru, which is basically um, your body, um, your auric field, creating that golden disc around the head known as Aton, the one. That's what Aton symbolized. Is that gold disc around the head in which that, of course, we see um, on the Caduceus or the Uraeus, which is called the U.S. Shet or the Washet, which symbolizes the epitome of enlightenment within the tantric um, uh, traditions, within the Tibetan and yogi and uh, um, Buddhist traditions. This is what this is all talking about. Now, how we got clues is because in Galatians, in the Bible, 421, it speaks about Abraham, his two sons, his um, bondmaid, um, and free woman, you know, which is um, Hagar and Sarah, and how the story was an allegory. Now, Abraham is the father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, Ibrahim, then we got a problem. We got a serious dilemma. Because if he didn't exist, then how do they exist? And what are they um, bartering on? Is borrowed time what they're bartering on? Because the truth is out now. And it's right in their own Bible, 421 through 26. Now, it says, which things are an allegory? For well, these are the two covenants. Now, you go to Holy Quran, Surah 3, Ayat 6. Even in the Quran, it tells you that. Quote, of the allegory. As I said, he, it is who has revealed the book to thee. Some of his verses are decisive. They are the basis of the book. Others are allegorical. Then those in whose hearts is perversity follows the part of it, which is allegorical, and then seeking to mislead. And this is what is taking place. And seeking to give us their own interpretation. And no one knows this interpretation except a law. And those firmly rooted in knowledge. You see that? So you hear that? I asked the um an Orthodox Muslim that about well what about um Surah three um Ayah six where it says that portion of it is allegory. He ran out the store. Don't play with me. Don't try to get me to um to pray um to something in which that I understand is within me and you're trying to make it externalized. So they got Jesus coming back. Um, they got um. 
um, a law um, outside of man and is a step on law if you uh, relate yourself to man. Well, you know, as a more right there in the whole um, in the uh, 101, you know, uh, questionnaire for Moorish Americans, it specifically tells us that Allah is in man. Of course, Orthodox Islam don't like that because that's too Sufi. Well, I would rather be a Sufi. I'm not praying something outside of myself because I know that God or God has embedded itself inside of its creation, i.e. me, you, us. Now, if we looked at uh, Webster Dictionary, we looked up the word allegory, it means, check this out, the expression by means of symbolic, fictional figures, characters, and actions of truth, or generalizations about human existence. It says it right there, fictional characters, or fictional figures, symbolic. So when we read the word allegory that we just did within the Bible and allegory within um, the Quran, what is it telling us? So this is how we know that Jesus didn't exist because he's supposedly be from the line of Abraham. And if Abraham didn't exist, then how could he? So we got two billion people on the planet. And more within Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, in which that is propagating this nonsense and this deception, the highest deception, because they got you worshiping something outside of yourself. What I say is that anyone who worships something outside of themselves is the Antichrist, because Christ is within. So, this is how we know. It's from their own text, the biblical text, the Quranic text. Both states that it's allegorical for the most part. So, now we got to clear up well, how did these books come about? Well, it said that 70 to 72. Um, so-called priests offered the Old Testament and then we have Orias Pisos or Pisos along with his family that offered the New Testament and basically what he did was took the renditions of the Old Testament and the things in which that he's seen on the walls of ancient Egypt because he was related to um, the Ptolemy or the Ptolemy such as in Cleopatra And these were supposed to have been plays, in which that these plays were transformed into stories um, or into these writings or, or the New Testament. In which that comes, because actually what we'll find out is that if you go to read up any information on Arias Pisos or Pisos, you will find out that he actually was a quote unquote, he was Josephus, Flavius Josephus, the first century historian. And he, along with his family, wrote um, the New Testament. Finley, um, various, um, um, many of his sons. This is where this information comes from, Phoebe. This is how this information in the New Testament came about. So not only was he Flavius Josephus, but he also played the character Jesus, as well as Joseph, as well as also Paul. In the Bible. Remember, these were plays. Now, remember, I did say that he got the information from off the walls of ancient Kemet because he was related to the Ptolemies. So he went there in order to do his research and study. So, in that regard, the information is still valid. In other words, there's still some keys on which that is there. So you don't throw out the baby with the bath water, which, most, which some of us have done. But there's still aspects of it in which that um, we can get into. So, 
So, when we're talking about these particular books, um, this New Testament, it was written between the years of 70 to 190, um, well, around 140, 70 to 140 A.D. Now, supposedly Jesus died at the age of 33, so if he was born in the zero year, as they would want us to presume, based on the Gregorian calendar from the Julius Caesar calendar, um, we would see that, you know, um, that that's supposed to have been around that time period. Now, the first historical mention of the Gospels of, I guess, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, or John, you know, saying in that regard, um, actually was made by um, St. Um, Iranius, which was around the time of uh, 190 A.D. And only an earlier mention of any gospel was made by um, Theophilus of um, Antioch, which he mentioned the gospel of John in 180 A.D. So we're talking about you know, almost 100, over 150 years after the so-called death of their Messiah that you have these writings in which that is um, being recognized um, by the so-called um, Christian fathers during that day and time. Well, there's something that was very interesting, too, that I read by Walter um, Castle, um, learned scholar, author of um, Supernatural Religion, in which that uh, one of the greatest works in which that supposedly was ever written on the origin of Christianity um, he says that after having exalted the literature and the testimony bearing on the point, we have not found a single distinct track of any of these Gospels during the first century and a half after the death of Christ. How can Gospels which were not written until 150 years after Christ is supposed to have died, you know, and which do not rest on any trustworthy testimony? That's what he says. And you don't have any test, tr um, trustworthy testimonies have the slightest value as evidence that he really lived. History must have found it upon must be found upon genuine documents or on living proof. When a man of today to attempt to write the life of a supposed character of 150 years ago without any historical documents upon which to base his narrative, his work cannot be a history. It would be a romance. In other words, it wouldn't be um, nonfiction. It would be fiction. Hence, as in fictional character. An allegory. He says not a single statement in it can be relied upon. This is what he says. You know, matter of fact, there's a large body of um, opinions in the early to deny the reality of Christ's physical existence. Um... In um, Dean um, Millman, his um, history of Christianity, he states that the Gnostic sect denied Christ was born at all or that he died. Okay. Um, Mossim, um, um, a German um, ecclesiastical historian, he states the Christ of early Christianity was not a human being, but an appearance, an illusion, a character in miracles. And this is one of the great ecclesiastical historians from Germany. Now, this all totally go against the current information which is being propagated um, by the guy who issued a challenge to Ashwa Kwesi and Pastor Ray Hagen, the dude from Zadagite. He's trying to prove the existence of Jesus using Josephus' work. And I just broke down how Josephus was actually Orion's Pisos, or Pisos. And that he and his sons and friends put the play together known as the New Testament. All right, matter of fact, um, in the scholarly work, it's called The Christ by John um, Remberg. He compiles a list of 42 writers who lived and wrote during the time or within a century after the time of Christ, none of whom ever mentioned him. So obviously it wasn't during the time then. 
And none of them ever mention him. But this is what he says in the work. So these 42 is from this family line known as the Arias Pisos or the Roman Pisos family. This aristocratic family who's related to King Herod. Yeah, the same King Herod who supposedly um, was trying to kill Jesus as a baby and kill all the children under the age of two. So hence the reason why Jesus had to run off to Egypt. You know, and of course, you know, he sent his um, guards there in order to look for Jesus, and Jesus could not be found. You know, so um, of course, you know, the saying goes, obviously, he looked like everyone else in Egypt during that time period. You know, but the most important thing is, once again, not to take this literal. Because it's not dealing with a literal character, as you have already heard from various sources already, from the Bible, from the Quran, from these various scholars that we just made mention of. It never happened. But once again, we have two over two billion people on the planet that believe it, and most would die for this, and have died for this over the last 2,000 years or so, not knowing the truth of the matter. Filio, one of the most renowned writers um, of the Jewish race, has produced, in which he states that, um, you know, during the Christian era, um, that actually he lived during the time um, of the supposed death of Jesus, or during the time of Jesus, you know, and the supposed death. Um, his home was in and near Jerusalem, where Jesus is said to have been, you know, had preached, performed miracles, to have been crucified, to have risen from the dead, have resurrected the dead. And had Jesus done all these things, the writers of Filio would have certainly, you know, contained some record of his life. Yet this philosopher, um, who must have been familiar with Herod, you know, Mask of the Innocence, as we stated earlier, and with the preaching, the miracles, and the death of Jesus, um, had these things occurred, he never wrote about it. Not, not, never even mentioned the name of, or any um, deed connected with this reputed savior of the world. And he lived during that time period. The life and during the death of the supposed Jesus and never mentioned it. But yet, Jesus taught thousands and thousands. The words would have got, um, got around. It would have got around. You know, especially from the age of, you know, um, 12 to the age of 30, in which that, you know, um, supposedly was the 18 missing years. Of course, um, that information you can find within the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. Um in which that dealt a lot with the Rosicrucian teachings. Um, you also have other books of, written about the um, 18 missing years of Jesus from the age of 12 to the age of 30, in which that supposedly he went to India, Tibet, um, China, you know, um, many different areas and got initiated into these various schools over the 18 years. By that time, he get, um, became the Christ. And then taught for three and a half years and died at the age of 33. This is what it said. But Filio lived during that time period and never mentioned it. This is what we were talking about with Josephus, who was actually a wise pisos in his um, Antiquities of the Jews. In this work, the um, historian made no mention of Christ. And for 200 years after the death of Josephus, the name of Christ does not even appear in history, in his history. Um, there was no print and press in those days. So books was um, multiplied by being copied. Now, it was, therefore, easy to add to or change what an author had written. The church felt that Josephus ought to recognize Christ, and the dead historian was made to do so. So it was after his death. 
in the fourth century, a copy of the um, Antiquities of the Jews appeared in which the, the basically the passage, now there was about time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the um, truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, has condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at the first did not forsaken him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day. And as the divine prophets have foretold these and 10,000 um, other wonderful things concerning him and the tribes of Christians so named for him as not extinct at this day. So that was added in. And of course, they get a description of Jesus, you know, that he was a little short man um, with um, little hair and um, dark skin. So they still had it in the image of, um, of us, even during this time period. You know, as a matter of fact, um, a lot of this information was still propagated by us. Remember, the oldest Christian um, settlement was out of Ethiopia, actually 300 years before the papal state, or what is known as the Vatican, was even formed. 300 years we had Christianity. And it's not the Christianity in which that you think of today. It's not the holy roller type of Christianity that you have today. This is talking about caress, the mummified body of Osar, which is the soul embedded inside the pineal gland, and how to awaken that particular soul through the Osetian um, um, resurrection, which is the raising up of the Kundalini, the Shakti, the Shekinah, the glorified face of God, the feminine face of God, the Shechem or the Sekhmat. And as he raised up, this black mother goddess principle raised up, she awoken her counterpart by the name of Osar, who was asleep or half sleep or dead in the tomb, in the sepulchre, as we would say, and resurrected him. And during that merger, formed Heru. This is why you see Tahuti um, making the phallus symbol for our set can transform into a bird, which is symbolic to the Ba. And she lit herself over top of the phallus symbol, and she flapped her wings very hard until the point in which that uh, saw with this phallus symbol, because remember, that's what was missing. Out of the 14 pieces of Osiris, that was um, never found. That was supposedly ate by a crocodile, by a crab, or by a catfish. Scavenge of the sea, as we would say. But she found every other part of him but that. And so Tahuti, which symbolizes the God of Wisdom, had to um, form one from clay. And so she lit herself over it and made him um, orgasm or to ejaculate, hence symbolic also to the resurrection and to the Takin um, or the Tekin, and as well as also to the Obelix, in which that is found all over the world. And you still have um, the image of the Black Madonna and Child, in which that symbolized um, this birthing of Heru and the nurturing of the Mother Goddess principle to Heru, which is talking about the golden embryo, which is supreme enlightenment being established within you through your meditation, through your breathing exercises, through your practice of Qigong or Tai Chi and any of the energy modality systems. Where you have refined your subtle body and you have become born again. This is what this is all talking about. Now, um, it says the name Jesus was as common among the Jews as is William and George with us. All right. Matter of fact, in the writing of Josephus, we find accounts of a number of Jesuses. And remember, this is what I was talking about. There were 14 Jesuses in which that was made mention of. Professor um, Bruno Braun, 
In his works, um, 1877, Christ and the Caesars, he stated that he concluded that the Romans had authored the um, New Testament and that Flavius Josephus was the inventor of Jesus, who became, uh, which became Serapis under the Council of Nasi in 325 AD. All right? Um, um, Abbot Law, uh, Rochelle, found the keys to unraveling um, this mystery in which that he said he found um, that um, the author um, was found in the Roman so family who was part of the Frugi dynasty. He authored a booklet that came out in 1979 in which that was based on the Pisos family in which that you can actually go to the website um, www.romanpisos um, to their home page. Just put that into the engine search, P-I-S-O. Now, there's another book called Jesus Chronicles Old Truths Uncovered by Judy James Carter, and she states that it was not until 397 A.D. that the Bible assumed its present form. All right? Now, that was years after the 325 A.D. of the Nicene Council. All right. As a matter of fact, um, his first um, synod of um, Lodicia was held around 363 A.D. as an assembly of bishops decided what could be read aloud. These are the books that they said: Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Esther, on first and second books of Kings, third and fourth books of Kings, first and second books of Ezra, the book of Psalms, 150 um, um, of those. Ecclesiastes, the Songs of Solomon, Job, the Twelve Prophets, you know. Now, you also had um, the New Testament that was able to be read, but there was the four Gospels, um, the seven um, Catholic Episcopal letters of Paul, the, um, the Acts of Apostle, um, James, the two books of um, Peter, three books of John, Jude, and the 14 other epistles of Paul. All right, so that so those was the books in which that was allowed, and that was the um, Bible which that they had by 397 A.D. So this is the the madness of what we're talking about. This is what happens when you take something external and you make it your deity or your God, your image, and that's all you have. Is your imagination, your visualization, in which that offers you um, um, the imprints or the copies or the memories of your walk in life. And you have this image embedded inside of your psyche. And the word psyche means soul. Psychology means the study of the soul. But Let's continue on. What happens is that this science, this divine marriage in heaven, as it is called, with the um, Arsetian force, which is the Kundalini um, awakening, Arsar, or the Arsarian force, which is the soul principle, which is half asleep in the pineal gland. Remember, the, the um, Kundalini was also half asleep at the base of the spine, wrapped three and a half times, call you at the base of the spine. And through certain positions and postures and mutras and mantras, you was able to awaken, or what's called um, hakaus or hissies, you was able to awaken that particular life force in order to raise up. And it comes through imagination and visualization also. But that's how Osar was awakened and produced the resurrected one or the ever coming one known as Heru, which actually is a form of Shu once again. As in Yahshua, the awoken or the awakened soul. Now, this mystic marriage is actually of the sun and moon. And in the spiritual um, sense, it's the union of the soul and the spirit. Now, to the Gnostics or the Noahs, um, Christos or caress or caress, um, the Gnostics, who is also known as the Essenes, who also known as the Nazarene, um, of course, we know they was um, was nothing more than 
um, upholders or guardians of the ancient Egyptian mysteries known as the Hakaz or the Herbach teachings, they understood that each being must be their own Christ and that each being is ultimately responsible for their own salvation. All right, this is what they knew. Now, you know, clearly, um, this is um, basically dealing with the science of this Osarian resurrection. Oh, you know, it's called the Osarian myth, but it is called on the walls of the um, Temple of Luxor um, um, in Egypt, or what is known as um, Karnak and Kemet. Now, it was allegedly built by Amenhotep III, you know, who's the, you know, the Nagu or the pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, and who's the father of Amenhotep IV, who was known as um, uh, Anaten. And this was over a thousand years before the birth of the mythical um, Christ, you know, of Jesus, I should say. You know, so when we get into that allegory, uh, we have to also look at what we were talking about with this golden body once again, because this is ultimately the highest science in which that you will reach if you master it through these various components of what we were talking about earlier about the breath of life. Now, dealing with that, as we said, you had the golden, um, the theory is, is that in, I guess you would say the particular schools of thought, such as the Taoist, the, um, the Shaolin, the, which is the Buddhist, the, um, the Hindu, or the Hindu Kushites, the Tamil, in particular, the pre-Davidians, um, the teachers was activating the original energy in the body. And in that particular um, heating, that um, starting point of the body, all right, um, creates the, um, the spiritual soul embryo. And the mother light, which is the Holy Spirit, which dissolves into the um, child light, which is about the Son of God, at the completed stage. Now, this is the true meaning of the um, all saw with his rule. Um, and um, the child sucking at the breast or the black Madonna and child or the Mary and the baby Jesus. You know, all of that is talking about that, how um, the mother light is dissolved into the child light. And the theory is, is that um, there's an incredible reservoir of um, stored energy in the lower um, torso that is heated by, you know, by, um, by various methods or means, you know, such as meditation um, Kutalini yoga or Tantra yoga, um, which is um, heat yoga, which is called Tumo within the Tibetan um, teachings, um, breath work and Qigong, you know, or pranic, uh, or pranayama. Now, this has to do with an actual physical transmutation, physiology now, in which that the extraction from the hidden force which is called amen from oxygen, is stored within your lower dantian, as it is called, which is the lower heaven, in which that the energy meridians of the body are fully open and the subtle bodies are unified, unified to such an extent that it produces this golden body. All right, I'm going to do a whole show on the signs of the golden body um, later on. But right now, um, we'll get to the phone lines, and um, we're going to end that right there. And um, so, um, yeah, we have some questions in the um, chat room. Um, Brother um, GX12 asks, um, did the Europeans steal the Jesus story from Horus? Yes. Or Heru? And if so, did Horus ever really exist? Yes, as your divine awakened soul. So, yes, within each one of us, if we get to the point of resurrecting that soul principle, so any one of us who have done so um, over the eon, you know, take on the title Heru or Horus. But it is not no one person that came with no hawk head in which that um, you've seen drawn on the walls of ancient Egypt. That is a symbol. The hawk head symbolizes the bird in which that means to take flight. 
to feel free. And the soul, when it comes out the body, it can actually project or you can actually soul travel. In other words, it is free to journey the cosmos, the universe, the galaxy. So that's what he symbolized was your divine awakened soul, hence the resurrected one. In other words, also when he is resurrected is his rule. Jesus, when he is resurrected, is Christ, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Mason. Uh, where did the Jews were the Jews ever enslaved in um, Egypt? No, because the word um, Jew, which is J, didn't exist like we said until um, the fourth, um, the fifteenth um, century, and didn't um, come into um, full. Um, as far as in any writing, you know, to that extent until the 17th um, century. So there was no Jews in that regard. Now, not as far as that word. Now, the word in which that we have as the followers of the so-called um, is, you know, the followers. I mean, ancient Kemet, there was a, tr- a tribe called the followers of Jehuti or Tahuti. But they call Jehuti, Jew, and they took that and made it the word Judah. So Judah is taken from Jehuti, which is Tahuti. So the tribe of Judah is actually talking about the people of Tahuti, the ones who come up under that particular school system. In other words, Tahuti, other um, form, is on which is the same word as John, as in John the Baptist, as in Enpu, um, also, which is called Anubis. It is also um, um, Yahweh, or Yah, or Jah, or Jehovah. That comes from the name of Tahuti. And you can get this from Dr. Ben Yakinin's book, um, African um, Western religion. He speaks about it. So no, not in that regard. You know, uh, we all have the ability in order to become here rule. All right, they all they, we all have that ability to take on that title. Christ is a title. Here rule is a title. Or saw as a title, or said as a title. These are all titles or names in which that we take on um, as we enlighten ourselves or come through our particular initiation through life experiences. And you have many of these particular names found in um, other schools of thought: the Yoruba, um, the Congo, the Ifa, um, the Khan. Uh, you know, many other schools. Okay. Um, let's go to the phone line. We got six zero nine six zero nine. You're on the line. You're on the air. Peace, peace, peace Doctor. Peace. peace. Uh, you, all, you always bring so much knowledge. Uh, I got a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first question is, uh, I totally understand where you're coming from with about praying outside of yourself. Uh, as um, one is being newly taught in these teachings, how would I approach prayers? Would it be just affirmations, speaking to myself, or um, right. is it just every, meditation? Right. Every, every thought is the thought of uh, God or or thought of Allah or the thought of Ra or Amen Ra. Right. You know, every thought okay. can be that. So the thing is, is that um, just begin to um, um, have more thoughts toward your higher self. Visualize right. your higher self, you know what I'm saying? You communicate with your higher self because that's what your higher self or your awakened soul is. That is Teru or God or your Christ. Okay. That's your Lord right. and personal Savior. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it right. says in the Old Testament that there's a jealous God, that God is, is a jealous God is because um, instead of focusing on the God within, we focus on the God without. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the God without can easily be um, tricky. You know what I'm saying? Because they got an yeah. image for you, you know, with that God without, and it's called the white man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and, and so that's that's why the church got so caught up in a posture 
because kneeling showed the submission to that white man. Exactly. In that regard. Okay. Right. You know, in that regard, right. Right. Now, what about um, as far as, you know, I, I know we have to look at um, the Bible as a book of science now. Um, right. Do do we follow the dietary laws as far as, like, not eating pork and shellfish and all that kind of stuff? I mean, how, how do we approach that? I mean, actually, Leviticus 11 chapter makes sense. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? Um, of course, you can um, refine it, and, of course, you can use the um, Ebra papyrus, in which that deals with um, the health issues in which that the ancient Egyptians or the Kemetic or Tamaran people was using also. In other words, okay. you all of the um, ancient information in order to develop a diet in which that, you know, um, how you feel. You got to become sensitive enough to the food and to the water in order to say, okay, I feel good when I eat this. I don't feel good when I eat that. Right. So it's about listening to the inner self again. Right, you have to. I mean, that's what it ultimately going to boil down to. Because right. remember, in First Corinthians six nineteen through twenty it says, "Or do you not know that your body is the temple of, of the Holy Spirit, which is in you?" Right. Whom right. you whom you whom you have from God, and you're not your own, for you was bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. In your body, right, right. That in makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that the attributes of eating pork doesn't glorify the higher self or God. Mm-hmm. You got it. The damn trigonosis yeah. runs it up in your brain and you effed up. Right, you right. About, That's you right. talking about um, 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 calcified pineal gland shit. No, you talking about your damn pineal gland being eaten. Right. Because <laughs> of parasites. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, one last question is um, I had uh, taken, I had studied some uh, information from the Hebrew Israelites a few years back and. Right. Uh, now and you know at that time I was coming out of the church teachings and it, right. you know kind of gave me a sense of culture but now I'm finding out now there is a lot of holes in that doctrine because it's um, a lot of it derived from the ancient comedic teachings and I'm saying you just broke down uh, Jew which came from Tahuti which they right. refer to as Yehudite right Yehudite right it's almost which is the same Tahuti. word right which right Tahuti. Right, so they, they and I, somebody else also broke down to me about ISIS or uh, uh, Israel being a breakdown of ISIS riot L, which was um, something which was almost like a hybrid name. Is really no real place called Israel. Well, actually, Israel is actually Osa. Okay. Osa okay. Ra becomes Israel, so it's based on Osa. A S A R R E. And you spell what? Spell it Israel. Okay. I S R A. R A. Yeah. Ra. E L. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now the R and the L's are interchangeable in the ancient Metaneta. Okay. The R's and the L's are interchangeable. Okay. And the symbol for the R and the L is a lion. Okay. Okay. And what does a lion do? It rolls. Ro- yeah. Right. So. That's why, in one sense, the R and the L's are interchangeable in that regard. So, when you say Israel, you take the L out and actually put an R there, and you're talking about Osar. Right? Osar. Osar yeah. Ray, right. Yeah. Which is Osar. So, right, that was something right. more than the school of Osar. Remember, we talked about the school of Tahuti, which was the Jews. Yeah, or that's right. We're just talking about now about the school of Osar. Okay. Which is the Israelites. Yep. Okay, then you had the Hebrews, which is yeah. the Hebrew, which is the Hebrew, school of Hebrew, yeah. the priest yeah, of Hebrew. Yeah, take the B out. There you go. Right. That's the word have Hebrew, the word uh, have means priest. The word okay. Hebrew means light. So the priest, wow. of, the priest of Hebrew. So you talking about being the followers of the priest of Hebrew, or you talking about um, being the, um, the school of Hebrew, you talking about the school of Osa and the school of Tahuti. Wow. So it all goes back to that origin. Right, that's okay. all that's that's the origin, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I started seeing a lot of holes in that doctrine because it was like, you know, now they couldn't line stuff up. They were trying to say that, you know, oh, we got pictures of uh Israelites coming out of the um out of Egypt on the hieroglyphics. Right, and and, like, and, that, and and that's beautiful, but that is something still external of yourself. What do it mean because that is still symbolism, that is still allegory, what do that mean to you? And to right. me, today. In other words, yeah. I don't give a fuck about Moses splitting the Red Sea 
four thousand no, years ago. What does that mean? It don't mean right. nothing. Jesus walking on water two thousand years ago. Okay, what? Okay, how do I do that shit? Yeah. Right, and they, you know they ain't saying? nobody had no cameras back then to see that. Right. <laughs> You know, so it's, it's, it really Hell, doesn't even matter. Now, and then on, 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 what's his dude name? Chris Angel, he do all that shit. He do all that, yeah. They, he he working the law upside down through, through like, witchcraft. I don't know what he's working, but uh, I've seen the shit on camera. Yeah. <laughs> As compared to <laughs> some shit I ain't seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You know, if, if you know, I, now see... You know, years from now, they're going to be saying, oh, yeah, I've seen Chris Angel walk on water. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. You know, niggas are going to put that into a book. Yeah. And they say, well, I don't right. believe it, you know, unless <laughs> somebody right. see it. Right. I remember right. Chris Angel. He yeah. was a man of statue, about 6'3", and he was able to levitate and walk on water. Yeah, I uh-huh. see him with my own ties. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, come on, man. You know, stop, I mean, yeah. stop, stop that shit. Yeah, stop confusing yeah. the people and telling the goddamn truth. And, it's, and the sad part, really, he's still preaching that. Yeah, like it's like you know, it, it, that, that's gonna help somebody. Exactly. Yeah, it ain't gonna help no damn sense. body. No, except damn, not. Um, um, except to come back to this motherfucker over and over again. It's called yeah, and keep giving him offers. Right, because you ain't get the shit right the first time. Right. Right. That's, that's what it's going to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, even when they talk about this whole, like, uh, rapture thing, it's, it's more about the rapture of the mind, the Kundalini. Right. Um, the rapture, rapture. is about, right, because, see, right now we have the um, accessibility in order to move from the fourth dimension to the fifth dimension. Actually, we are actually fourth, the so-called Negro race or the race of Hiru or the Kushite or the Nubian or the Nuwaku, uh-huh. whatever term that we want to use for ourselves, the Moors, we actually are fourth dimensional beings and we are being held down by third dimensional beings. Okay. Now how you know this is because by the texture of the hair. Right. If you look at if you look at the old T V back in the day before the remote control, you had uh-huh. rabbit air antennas, which was just straight antennas, and which that gave you That's access it. to channel two to channel thirteen. That's right. Which was known as very high frequency or VHF. VHF, but if you wanted to right. tap into the ultra high frequencies, which was called UHF, UHF. you had to go to channel right. U, in which that gave you channel fourteen to channel eighty three. That's right. What was I remember the, that. What, right. What was the what was the antenna on the back of the TV so you can pick those channels up? It, it was what a was circle. It? Bingo. Now look at your okay, texture. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Now look at your texture here compared to this. Wow. Wow. So when we're wow. talking about nine either, we're actually talking about the shin or the sin, which is talking uh-huh. about um the ohm antenna, because that's what the antenna was called, the ohm antenna. The ohm antenna, right. And that has to deal with frequency. Thank you. What's gotcha. the sound that the Tibetan monks, the Shaolin monks, the um the Buddhist monks, the yogis, um all of them yeah. can't? Ohm, ahum. Thank you. Ahum. Exactly. Yeah. Got you. Exactly. So they know uh-huh. that frequency taps you into the fourth dimension. But wow. we are the personification of the fourth dimension in flesh. And we're getting ready to jump into the fifth dimension. And they don't want that. This is why they're trying to hold us back and do what's called lockdown code frequency or lockdown code transmission, as Dr. Phil talked about it. And they're doing it through the food, which is through the um, GMOs, genetically modified yeah. organisms, genetically um, um, modified organisms, what's called Franken foods. That's they're right. doing it through the water, you know, pollutants of the water. You know, um, um, every damn thing is acidic instead of being alkaline. Yes. You know, they're right. it through the air, you know, in which that mm-hmm. they drop in the chemtrails. Chemtrails, yeah. You know, in which that um, has bacterial spores in it, in which that cause a disease called Mangellin, in which that attacks your immune system. Right, right. So they are trying their best in order to hold us down and to keep us from yeah. jumping and making that transition into the fifth dimension. You know, okay. particularly doing these particular alignments in which that is mentioned of, um, during so called um, December twenty um, first, twenty twelve through thirteen, actually going to be all the way through the sixteenth, um, twenty sixteen. I mean, which day we're going to begin to start seeing these transformations, and a lot of this is going to come. Matter of fact, these children are already being born now with active DNA code, um, um, active coding within their DNA, 
Um, and some have three strands of DNA instead of two strands. And actually, we were supposed to develop 12 strands. And Dr. Phil okay. two strands, but I know at least 12 strands um, and 12 ethereal strands, which give us 24. Right. Well, what they call that, um, like, junk DNA before? Right. That's the, right. That's the junk DNA, exactly. Okay. And they already started yeah. picking up frequency and transmission talk between the um, two strands of DNA and the junk DNA that the, right. that, the, um, that is now communicating once again. Okay. okay. So they're trying their best to stop that from taking place. So and that's that's things, really the like talking about the atom still sleep. Right, exactly. Matter of okay. fact, I did a book, it's called um, Chinese Super Psychics. Okay. And um, in the book, there was a little dude, um, a little Chinese dude, and his name was Little God. Wow. And um, he told one of the um, guards in which that was um, rolling with him, he said, look, um, I'm going to take the change out of your pocket and put it in his. Okay. And he did that mentally. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And he did that because the little guy was, because um, the guy, um, the, the guardian was um, was teasing him. You know, call, I guess, call, you know, calling him a big head or whatever the case was. And he told right. him that, look, if you don't stop messing with me, I'm going to take your head and put on his head. And in order to show him, he took the change from out of his pocket and put it in the other guy's pocket. Okay, okay. Just give him a wake-up call. Bingo. Right. You know, so this all this shit is real. I mean, they're not making movies yeah. in Hollywood spending millions and billions of dollars. Oh, you know? no, they're putting it in there. They're putting right, it in exactly. there. You look at the um, Chronicles. You look at um, on TV, um, 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 No Ordinary Family. Um, uh-huh. um, man, there's so many um, hero, um, um, heroes from back in the day. Oh yeah, you know. As a so matter of I mean, fact, even like this, lot, a lot of superhero movies they got uh, putting right. the codes in that, like the Avengers, even like uh, Spider Man right. and the Hawks coming out, the Nation of Hawks. Right. Exactly, the Nation of Hero. Yeah. And we, right. And we're known to be the Hero people. Yeah. Exactly. Just like the Avatars. Exactly. So I mean, they they know what's getting ready to take place. You yeah. know, we just got to know what time it is. Why are they trying to make uh, 2112, uh, the 21st of December 2012, sound like uh, doomsday? Um, because um, they want fear. If there's enough fear and panic, then okay. um, they think by doing so that this particular alignment won't take place because there'll be so much fear and panic that we would stop the um, the graduation process. Okay. What is uh? What do you think one of the main things we as melanated people should do as far as uh, preparing because I, I know there's going to be a time when the stuff hits the fan as far as like the finances they're going to change the, the currency and all that kind of stuff right. and, and you know and, and change the food uh, supply for one I know we should start growing our own food for one no doubt. and then mm-hmm. um, but as far as like the finance and, and, and prevention of uh, disaster what should we do as far as our people is concerned Learn the to kind of prepare the for that Learn the science of breath. I, that's all I can tell you. Learn the science of breath. Yeah. The breath controls the emotions, so it controls the factor of fear. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So if you learn how to right. breathe correctly, then there is no fear. So that means that you right. will not stop or impede your progress into spirituality or okay. into the next level of consciousness or dimensions of information. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what we're talking about. The breath of life um, or the science of the breath of life is talking about Shu. Learn the science of Yahshua. That's what yeah. it meant. That's, yeah. that's what it meant in the Bible where it says um, that Jesus said, um, "No one can come to the Father but by me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life." The breath yeah, the of life. life, right? The breath, you know the ruach. Saying? The only one who can see the Father is but through me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the only right. way you can get to the soul, which is heaven, within your heaven, which is in your kingdom, your dome piece. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's through the breath is through the breath of life. Right. It's through Shu. It's through Yeshua. Yeah. In, in you, not not the outside. Right. Once again, right. when you sneeze, what's the sound you make? I chew. Thank you. Yeah. When you yawn, what's the sound you make? Oh. Exactly. So That's put that together. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeah. Thank you. So they already encoded the shit inside your own body. It's the personification wow. of the air. You are the personification of the air. You are shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, if we can go without food for a month, we can go without water for two weeks, but we can't go without breath for three minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, try 
and I get, and I can call nine one one for you right now. Just give me the location mm-hmm. before you do it. Yeah, that's true. So that's the most important thing um, that it ever was and ever will be. God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. Yeah. If you want to get to God, which the body is the temple of God, you know, with the awakened soul, then you must learn how to use your nostrils, the breath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Powerful, powerful. Thank you for the answers. No doubt, I- What's the name of that book again? Um, the Chinese Super Psychic? Right, the Chinese Super Psychics. Okay. Okay. Just put it into we'll the search in Google and pull it right up. Amazon okay. got it. Yep. Yeah, that's where I get all my books. I'm get, yep. I'm Chinese here. super psychics. Okay. China super psychic. Okay. Um, peace out. Peace out. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Area code three three six. Area code three three six. You on the line? Hey, what's going on, brother Lynn? This, peace, this peace, is Rob. Peace. Peace, hey, um, I wanted you to to uh, uh, elaborate a little bit more on how the body, the human body, correlates with the Milky Way. I've been, you know, reading up on that stuff, um, you know, a couple books from Manly people, but just other things that I've been, you know, trying to check out and trying to compare it and how, um, you know, Aries in the head and all that, just trying to put it all together on how it correlates with the Milky Way. Right, right. Well, um, first off, you got to look at the Milky Way and the way that um, the Milky Way is shaped actually is in the same um, shape as that of the Nile River. And yeah. the Nile River actually is in the shape of actually your spinal column. Yeah. Your, your um, spinal fluid. Which that runs through a hollow area called the Shoshuna up the, um, up the back of your um up and down your back. You know, yeah. through the spinal. So, and within there, there's 31 nerves. And outside there's two nerves. So, hence giving you 33. And then along the um the spinal column called the digit, there's 33 vertebrae. Hence the reason why they say Jesus Christ died at the age of 33. Yeah. Because your lower self is crucified once it enters into um, the Holy of Holies. Okay. okay so uh, astrologically, you're talking about um, Amen is Aries within the ancient comedic teachings. Amen yeah. is Aries. And the symbol for Amen and Aries is a ram, which symbolizes the head of the zodiac or mother Zodiacus. Then you have the throat, which is Taurus, but that is actually Apis, as we made mention of earlier, which is the bull of our saw, in which that symbolizes the throat area. Then we have Gemini, in which that actually is Tefnut and Newt, all right? Um, also, it is um, our saw and our set. Then they made it our saw and set because of the battle. Okay. All right, in which they actually it was Heru and set in that regard. So they transformed it from male and female to male and male within the Greek um, rendition of the Gemini. But that symbolizes the um, hands, the arms, and in particular the lungs. Then we have um, um, cancer, which that is actually Kapara, which is um, not a crab, but actually the dung beetle. Okay. Okay, which that symbolizes the... um, 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 the um your lower abdomen area, I should say not your lower, but your upper abdomen area, um, which is your um diaphragm, as well as also um portions of the heart. Then you have Leo, in which that actually is Atum. The female counterpart is Sekmat. They both was the lion and lioness um deity oh, okay. or And that is the lion. Okay, and then of course okay. that symbolizes the heart. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then you have Virgo, which is actually um, Orset, the Virgin. And yeah. Uh, that's yeah. what Orset's name was. It was Mary. It was that M E R I becomes M A R Y. Yeah. It's the biblical character of Jesus' mother within um, the New Testament. But that came from Orset. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you clarified that up for right. me because I've been trying to. Um, right. I ain't finish, let, me, let me finish all oh, okay, up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is symbolic to um, the stomach or the abdomen area. Then we have um, Libra, all right, in which that um, is the scales of Mayat. That's Mayat, in which that symbolizes yeah. the kidneys. Then you have Scorpio, 
all right, in which that symbolizes the genitalia. But that is Saket, which is the um the um serpent king. Oh, well, not the serpent, but the um the scorpion king, as he's also referred to as. And the yeah. other symbol is the eagle. The scorpion have three symbols. You have the snake, you have the um scorpion, and you have the eagle. Yeah. All right. Then you have Sagittarius. All right, in which that is um shoe. In which that symbolizes the lower back portion of the spine. Okay. Okay. Or the small of the back, the pelvis and the hip area. And then, you know, um in between Scorpio and, and um Sagittarius is another sign called the thirteenth sign in which that is coming into play called officiates, in which that is actually Imhotep, in which that is the serpent bearer, or he is the wrestler of the serpent, he's the serpent wrestler, in which that symbolizes the Kutalini being awakened once again as his 13th sign comes into play. Oh, okay, so that's, that's what's taking place right now in the cosmos. That is taking place right now. Then you have Capricorn, in which that symbolizes the goat, in which that is Mendez, in which that symbolizes um, the knee. And then you have Aquarius, in which that symbolizes the calves and the ankles, in which that is Heru. And then we're going down to the age of Heru. Yeah. Then we have um, Pisces, which is symbolic to the feet, in which that is Sebek, the crocodile nature or deity. So these are the um, correlations within ancient Kemet um, to the Greek rendition to um, the Zodiac, okay? Okay. Yeah, because, you know, I was sitting, sitting back, you know, finding out what this means, like uh, uh, Golgotha is, you know, meaning the cranium. Right. So I was like, okay, I said, oh, this is taking place, you know, within the human body. I said, so. Right, all because this Aramaic is, word know, was, right, Aramaic word for, remember, they say Jesus Christ got crucified on Mount Calvary. Well, yeah. the Aramaic word is called Gagotha, which means the place of the skull. Yeah. And this goes back to what I just told you, that when the Kutalini reaches the Holy of Holies, which is the skull area, the lower self is crucified. Hence, Jesus is crucified, and he had to give up the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> the ghost had to ascend. It sit on the right-hand side of the Father. Hence, when the Kutalini comes up to the brain area, it crucifies the lower self, the fleshly material nature of oneself and it opens and activates the right hemisphere of the brain which gives you access to a creativity and being able to soul travel to yeah. exit the body at will through what is called the right articular in which that scientists have now been able to place nodes, electrical nodes on that particular area and a person is able to have an out of body experience hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is some yeah. deep shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I always wish that they were to, to get up and get away. Right. And how you do it is through the holy breath, the breath, the science. That's it. The breath is, the breath is it. That's the mediator between your lower self and your higher self. That's what controls your emotions. The emotions, uh, um, an African proverb, an Egypt, um, a, um, comedic or Tamaran proverb says this. Is that the emotions um, make a poor master? The emotions make a poor master. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why that was made is because um, when you use your emotions, you make poor decisions. Okay. Not that you can't use your emotions, but when it comes to decision making, on um, time, you are running around like a chicken with your head cut off most of the time, and you're so angry and so much using your lowest um, attributes. You know what I'm saying? Till you can't think straight. And then when you come to your mind, or when your right mind comes back into play, then you're saying, damn, I shouldn't have done that. Or damn, I fucked up. Or I messed up. Or I did this or did that. And you saddened by it. Yeah. Okay. Because I've mm-hmm. been trying to check out, too, about that, uh, that uh, uh, amount of time and gold, or that honor, right. and how it correlates right. with the manna from heaven. Right. Well, you have your own um, 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 atomic gold, bro. 
once you learn the science of breath, actually what happens is that um, once the soul is awakened and Heru is resurrected, um, within the third ventricle, it would drop this dew substance in which that is called the land of milk and honey or the land of cannon, in which that it is actually a mixture of your, um, actually it's a mixture of DMT, which actually is the combination of um, melatonin and serotonin, which melatonin is white. Serotonin is yellow. So hence, milk and honey. Yeah. You see? And so when this is excreted, this dew comes down if you have what is known as a epiphany gland, which is a mound at the top roof of your mouth in which it has, a, um, in the center of the mound, is a little hole. And out of that hole will come this um, crisp, this Christmas or the chrism. This chrism is this... Um, Amatomic gold in which that they're talking about is already within you. You don't necessarily have to take something outside of you. You just have to learn the science of breath in order to react it. Okay. It comes through the activation of the 12 pair of cranial nerves and the breath technique in order to activate that in order to um, awaken the 12 pair of cranial nerves, which is the 24 elders, of course, 12 times pair is 24 elders. Um, which is mentioned in the book of Revelation, the 24 um, elders sat around the throne of God and worship God day and night. The throne is talking about the pineal gland, the lamb, yeah. the sun, which the soul is embedded inside of that sits in the center of your brain. And those 12 pair of cranial nerves sits around it. That is Jesus and his 12 disciples, just like the sun and his 12 zodiac signs. You have that same physiology. You have that same um, composite because as above, so below, as within, so without. Yeah, yeah. And the breath technique in order to awaken that area is what is called the alternating nostril breath technique. It was that you would breathe in, um, you would close off your um, right nostril, breathe in for a count of four through your left nostril, hold it for a count of 16, and then breathe out through your right nostril for a count of 16, and then reverse the process. And do that 20 times. And that's what activates those particular nerves in the brain, is that particular breath technique in which, in which that relaxes you. All right? But let me get on to the next caller, brother. Appreciate you. All right. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. All right. We got area code 313. Area code 313, you're on the line. Area code 313, you're on the line. Peace. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, peace. Peace. Um, I wanted you. This is Sonya. Yeah. I, don't, I came on kind of late. And did you can, did you relate how Canaan or uh, land of Canaan is uh, related? Yeah, we just been talking about the land of Canaan. That what you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, how that is nothing more than um um your brain. The land of Canaan is your brain, and within your brain there's the land of milk and honey, as it is called. That's what the land of Canaan is called. But there's two chemicals called serotonin and melatonin. Mm-hmm. Which is excreted, but when they are excreted at the same time, it produces the chemical called DMT, in which that scientists claim that is not produced, but when you are born and when you die. But through these particular um, metaphysical or, or um, esoteric occult teachings, you can actually activate the pineal gland to produce um, DMT. Okay, which so is the, which is the God molecule or God force? Mm-hmm, go ahead. So you know when it, in the Bible it talks about um, how Israel takes over the land of Canaan. Right, exactly. Because remember, Israel is all saw, and we just finished talking about that. All saw in his resurrected form is Heru, yes. which is the Christ. So they take over the land of Canaan. Right, the so Heru okay. takes over the land of Canaan. Okay. Or all saw, you know, which is Israel. Also, Ray is Israel, as we broke down with the last brother. I was breaking that down to him a few yeah. minutes ago. Which well, one I heard that. Go back and listen to the whole show, and we get into it, especially during the last hour or so, we get into that information. Matter of fact, that brother just asked that same question. Um, 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 right before, actually. Right I heard before, the outside part. I did hear that. Right. Right. So, that's, so actually, um, Israel is actually Also Ray, or mm-hmm. Also Ru, or Also Ra. All right, and that is Israel, you know, saying which means to ascend to God. Okay, yeah, I didn't. Israel I was just trying to get like Canaan. So now you said that's right. the brain. Right, that's the brain. Okay. Where, where else do the Kutalini ascend to? To God, who art in heaven, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Mm-hmm. What's the kingdom? Your dome piece. Mm-hmm. Okay. That is the kingdom. Your dome piece. Remember, Luke seventeen twenty one says the kingdom of God is within you. Neither look here nor there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Never right. stop looking outside of your damn self. Don't look there. Don't look here. Look within. <laughs> right. Right. So that's what that is all talking about. The whole okay. mystical stories is talking about the physiology of your of your body and how to reach the um, higher spiritual um, potential that you have, which is the golden body, which is the mm-hmm. resurrected body, the rainbow body, the diamond body. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. All right. Peace. Peace. All right, before we go, um, we got an announcement. Make sure that y'all get on the cruise. Uh, we're going to have that United Washington cruise. Um, the United Washington cruise will be on um, March the uh, 21st through 25th, all right, of 2013. All right, so um, we're making sure that the world don't end, um, you know, in uh, 2012, December 21st, 2012 AD, as some people um, has, um, you know, try to state. So um, we will be going um, on that particular trip, all right? Peace. Yeah. Yes, peace, love, and prosperity. Peace, God. How you doing? All right, peace, God. What's going on? <laughs> I am wonderful. I'm wonderful. I wanted to give the announcement of your classes that you're having every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, and also every Monday. Um, for all of y'all that are interested in taking those classes, it's $160 for the whole month. And as you know, the God holds nothing back. So you can take the law classes or you can take the alternative healing classes. Classes start at 8 o'clock, and all you have to do is send an inquiry to Healing Wings with an S online at yahoo.com. And I'm going to spell it for you. It's Healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G, Wings, W-I-N-G-S, online, O-N-L-I-N-E, at yahoo.com. Put in the subject line, classes inquiry. Okay? Um, We definitely do take payment plans, and don't let the lack of funds be the reason why you don't add on. Also, I have another announcement. I'm so excited about the National Motor Club. If your money is funny, then join the National Motor Club. You can also send an email to the email that I broke down just a few couple of seconds ago. Um, Emergency roadside assistance. More if you get pulled over, they give you $200. God forbid you hit somebody, they give you $2,000. If you need to be bailed out of jail because you've been locked up for exercising your right to travel, they will do that. $25,000, family. I'm loving it. Um, whether you have the membership or or your grandmother has it, y'all both can get 60% off on your generic prescriptions, 25% off on your brand name, and also on your vision family. You wearing glasses or contacts, save 60%. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you're interested, email us or call us at 252-257-3588. All right, family. Thank you, P. <laughs> we out, y'all. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radio.
radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Word. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. And the definite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Radio. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of the ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. <laughs>